Welcome to the Working Women's Channel. My name is Clara Capano, and we're gonna share the real secrets to success. Come on in. Welcome everybody to today's episode of the Working Women Channel. I am your host, Clara Capano, and man, we are going to have a fun guest today. We have today Jen Potter with Epic 47. And man, when we talk about a mompreneur that has taken over the world, when I met Jen a few months ago at a conference that we were at together, I was just blown away as to the level of not only success, but just how she keeps it all together as being a working mom with kids and multiple businesses going on. So Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it's so great. So, you know, before we dive in, just tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about, you know, who you are. Oh, absolutely. So I am a crazy mom to three children and one puppy. And I don't know what possessed me to get a puppy this summer, but we did that. So now I have four children. I own multiple businesses here in the South Coast of Massachusetts and constantly looking to work and grow. Yeah. It's fantastic. Simple, simple. Yeah. So, you know, Jen, the, the whole point of the show is to, you know, let women around the world know that life happens and it's changing that and reframing it to sometimes life happens for us, not to us. And we all know that the road to success is, is not always paved in a smooth path. And sometimes there's bumps in the road. Can you think about a time where maybe on your road to success, you you hit a bump in the road. You hit something happened that kind of threw you for a loop. And how did you face that? And how did you keep going forward? Absolutely. So I know we definitely talked about this in the past. So about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with a heart condition. And for me, that looks like one minute I'm completely fine. The next minute I'm in the hospital and I never know when that's going to happen. So that happens quite often. A few months ago, I got rushed out of my house in an ambulance. Two days later, I was back at work. So for me, it's kind of like a pause in my life, but it doesn't actually stop me. Um, going back to 2019, this is kind of where I guess my most of my motivation comes from. I was driving to an entrepreneurship uh, program. It was the first night I'm driving down the road and I had my first heart attack. So having the heart condition that I have, I'm very susceptible to having multiple heart attacks and I'm driving down the road and ironically, I'm right next to a hospital. I call my husband and not, <laughs> and not 911 and he's like, pull over to the side of the road. You need to call an ambulance. And I'm like, well, I'm almost there, right? I feel like it's like that mom mentality. I and got it's this. The, I <laughs> I got that. I'm like, I got this. And I don't recommend that to anyone. I should have pulled over because I know how dangerous it was because even that mile and a half that I drove to the hospital was very blurry. I probably could have hurt somebody. So in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that. But I ended up going to the hospital. I suffered from a mild heart attack, but thank goodness I was so close to the hospital when it happened. But ironically, it was on that first night of me going to an entrepreneurship program to learn how to run businesses. And I could have done multiple things in that moment. I could have said, well, this is a sign I probably shouldn't be doing this, or maybe this is a sign that I should be doing this. And I took the the ladder and I said, you know what, I'm going to miss the first class, not a big deal. And I'm just going to go to the next one a few days later. So once I go to the hospital, that's, you know, kind of what I started doing. But that for me, that was a really big pivot in my life because it when you almost lose your life, your whole life changes. Mm -hmm. The way that you perceive things, the way that you do things, right. taking risks. You know, for me, I'm a risk taker. I always was a risk taker, but now it's just like, well, what do I have to lose? So I might as well do it. So, whereas I think some people would go the opposite of, I've got to play it safe because, you know, risk is scary. So again, I think those are those two options that you can go into and in, in being able to step into it with the mindset of more abundance and excitement of, you know, let's go, let's go for it. So absolutely. So let's talk about this because obviously one being diagnosed with any type of health condition that is as serious as yours is scary. And especially when, again, you are a parent and you have children that you know something could happen. What were some of the things that you had to change because clearly it didn't stop you. Again, you own multiple companies, but I do, I, I'm assuming that things had to change how you had to approach things. 
I, I guess more along the lines of being more efficient, uh, delegating responsibility, that's really important, how I'm going to handle things on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing that I can't do it all myself. And if I want to do all the things, I need to have people who can do all the things for me. So that's really important. Like I know if I have to take a day or if I don't feel good, I know that I can turn over all that responsibility to somebody else and just shut off if I have to. So it's being more intentional with my time and then also setting boundaries and limits of all of the things I do because spending time with my family is the most important. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's unpack this because speaking with women, this is a challenge that so many of them face. And I'm sure that you see this too, you know, in your life is the idea, first of all, about not doing it all. So many struggle, whether it's that they're control freaks, they don't think they have the money, they don't know where to go. So where were some of the areas that you started as far as delegating out? Because so many people struggle with that letting go. So I think where it started was asking for help and none of us want to ask for help, right? So I have ADHD. I'm type A. I always want to be in control. I know personally, like if I don't do it, it's not going to get done the right way. Right. And so many women think that way because that's just, it's ingrained in us. And, and plus we want to do all the things we get to take care of our kids. We get to bring them to all the places we get to cook all the meals and we have to do all the cleaning. And in reality, that's not going to happen. You're going to burn out and something's going to happen. So it starts at home. So the biggest thing was delegating responsibility at home. And my husband's fantastic when it comes to that. It's okay. This is what we have going on for the week. We have a full schedule on the calendar and who's going to cook dinner tonight. Who's going to bring the kids here. So really, delegating responsibilities at home and switching things. And since that happened, I'm totally spoiled. I don't do any of my laundry. My husband took over the full responsibility of doing the laundry in the house. And I kind of just like let him take that on. So it's been fantastic. Yes, it is. I know that's one of the ones that I don't enjoy doing as well. There's too many steps to it. <laughs> it is. And yeah. And I think that, you know, sometimes people don't think about the home front, you know, especially with entrepreneurs, our work is another one of our children. And so sometimes right. it's hard to delegate, especially in the growth, but we forget, you know, delegating out on the home front. And if we do have kids that are old enough or a significant other, asking them for help is okay. And I know for me, even asking for help from some of my friends, hey, can you pick up my kid at school today for me? Because I have a call and, you know, there's no weakness in asking for help. No, absolutely not. And everybody's there to help, right? So we do that with our daughter for dance, especially like we have in the neighborhood, another mom who her daughter dances with my daughter and their schedules are almost identical. So we actually switch responsibilities on one day, one person goes and vice versa. And that's beautiful because if she has a meeting, I'll take over. If I have a meeting, she'll take over. And it's beautiful because it allows that extra time to do the things that we need to do and helping another mom in business as well. Yeah. So I love it. I want to pick your brain a little bit on boundaries, because this was something that really stood out when I saw you on speaking on the panel at the conference is, you know, you are very, you know, structured in your days. You have those boundaries. You mentioned it a few minutes ago. I think also people are afraid boundaries because the little voice inside their head is if I'm not available, I'm going to lose business. Whereas I've come to learn that the more boundaries you have, actually, it helps you increase. But what are some of the things that you're, you do to protect your time? And more importantly, how do you communicate that to others so that, again, you are staying in control and you're not losing business? I think, yeah, that's really important. So boundaries are super important. And sometimes like it's okay to bend them a little bit. So just know that if you set a hard boundary, we're setting them for ourselves. So the reason why we stop at a certain time, like I'm done at five o'clock, but reality, my calendar stops at 430. But that's because at five o'clock is my kid time to go to dance, to have dinner together, to do all of the things and be present in their lives because we work so hard for our families, right? And you know firsthand, burnout is real. And when we're taking all that time away from the family, what's the point? You can have all the money and have all the things, but it means absolutely absolutely nothing if you're not there for your kids. So setting boundaries are super important. And by really just, you know, illustrating it and saying, okay, if I'm sending out an email, my email say at the bottom, I'm only available between nine and five. Send me a message. If I answer, I answer. My phone actually goes on silent at five o'clock. My voicemail say after these hours, I am not available. I am only available between these times. And if the client says, well, you know, you're not going to get my business. Do you really want that client? Do you want someone who's not going to respect you and respect your time? And when we're at the beginning of business, we want all of the business, but I will tell you firsthand as well. And I'm sure you can, that those clients that don't respect your boundaries from the, from the get-go are going to be the ones who are going to call you at midnight. They're going to text your personal line. They're going to show up when you don't want them to show up. And is that really the stress that you need in your business? Absolutely not. There's another client. Exactly. And I love that you say that because 
that's exactly the same message that I have. And I learned it the hard way because I learned by doing all these things. And I remember one time I was talking to a potential client and they lived in a different time zone. And they said, well, you know, I have my real job. So I want to talk either before my job starts or after my job starts. And I was like, well, what about my job? You know, I'm working too during the day. And it was a key indicator. It was in that moment that I'm like, they're going to try to control the shots. And I think it's so true is when you put those boundaries in again, you set your standards and you have to understand that you're not going to get everybody. But the truth is you don't want everybody. And again, you can bend it when it makes good business sense and when it works for you. But I have done this so many times and and I've seen many of my clients, none of them have lost business. Every time they put this into place, by the end of the year, their business has increased and they're happier. Absolutely. I yeah. agree. It's it's the best thing I ever did because at the beginning of one of my first businesses, I worked seven days a week, every single day, all of these hours at night, in the morning. And once I started really controlling my time and really setting those hard boundaries, I'm able to take a day off. I'm able to sit back and relax. And, you know, you know, women in business never shut off, but you still need time to break away from it. So yeah. that's really important. So let's talk about how you do that and um, how, you know, do you have systems in place so that if you're taking a day off, there is still somebody else stepping in to help your people? Yeah. So I have the most fabulous GM. So whenever I need to take time off, we, we delegate our time around each other. So that really works out really, really well. And I kind of have it structured all of, you know, pretty much almost all of my days. If I have to take an emergency day off, I can clear my calendar. And most people will understand if you have to take a day, but usually when I go on vacation for me, I don't like to be that person. So this is just me personally. And everybody is completely different because I have ADHD and because I am like a go, go, go person. I like to make sure that my emails are clear, even if I'm not going to answer them, but knowing what's in front of me when I'm on vacation. So I'll wake up at like five o'clock in the morning while everybody's sleeping. I do that anyways, every day. And I will schedule out my emails for when I return. So if I got an email on a Monday, but I know that I'm not returning till the next Monday, a schedule sent email will go out for that Monday. So everybody doesn't know that I'm actually working. Now I'm telling the whole world, but like, you know, but for me, I don't have to respond. And if I don't want to, I don't have to, but I like to come back from vacation feeling relaxed and not to 500 emails. So that's just me personally. And I, I do similar stuff because I'm an early bird as well. And so a lot of times, you know, I remember last year when I was in Mexico, again, I would be up, go do my workout, and then I would sit by the pool and do a little of these things. And then by the time it was nine o'clock and everybody was waking up, I could then go and enjoy the rest of the day with them. So again, yeah, and it's a great feeling, them. right? It is. And again, for me, it quiets my mind. Um, it's me not too. so much that I'm working, but again, I can come back feeling like people were taken care of and, and they know, and it all comes back to, again, the right people understand. And when you Absolutely. set the expectations from the start and you show your value, the right people wait for you. And again, respect those. Oh, absolutely. And when I go out away, usually like a week or two before my email will say I will be out of the office. So, you know, direct all of your attention to to the GM. So 90% of the people actually won't even send me email. So it's that's a great thing, too. And I think that's a, a problem that I see is people are afraid sometimes to share. And it's like people have to understand. And I remember, you know, I was following Darren Hardy. And one of the things he said that I loved is your clients pay you to take time off. You know, our people right. want us to take time off. What they don't want is to not be taken care of if something comes up. So that's why whether it's a GM, it's a buddy, it's an assistant, you have to have somebody in place for those emergencies and for those things. But at the end of the day, no one's going to be mad at you for going on vacation or taking a day off. And But you've got to, again, set those expectations from the start. And I think that's oh, absolutely. a big lesson. So how do you take care of yourself? Because, you know, this is obviously more top of mind for you being that you have to pay attention to your health and your wellness, but I think all of us do. So what do you do to take care of yourself and how do you make that happen? So that's really important. So exercise is really big for me. I'm actually training for a marathon. So the running is my self-care, which is funny because everyone's like, you're beating up your body. I'm like, no, but I feel amazing. So training for a marathon, going outside, going for walks, that's really important for me. Um, one of the things that I love to do is there's a local spa here in the next um 
a state over in Rhode Island and they do like what's called a water journey. So every six to eight weeks I go there, you unplug, you can't have a cell phone and you go through hot and cold water and sauna and steam and all of the things. And for me, that's like a rest and reset where I can't bring my cell phone with me. I have to detach and I have to let go of everything in the outside world for four or five hours. So that's, that's how I love to de-stress. Absolutely. And again, we have to remember that if we're going to be the best for our people, we have to take care of ourselves. And Absolutely. You know, I'm thinking, you know, for your kids watching you, you know, all the lessons that you're you're teaching them to be able to help them, because, you know, if we saw our kids running themselves into the ground, we would say, take the day off. You know, we would say yeah. do these things, but we have to remember to do these for us. So mm-hmm. talking about yeah. being a mom. Um, not everybody is a mom listening and watching, but many of us are. Um, what would you say are some of the, you know, the best things that, you know, you're bringing to the table as a business owner, but also being a woman and a, and a mom, what do you think are some of the, the traits that we have as women that make us stronger leaders and stronger in business? I think first and foremost, you know, showing up every day, showing our children how we show up, how we're present, setting those boundaries, you know, achieving all of those goals. You know, one of the things that I talk about all the time is the difference between can and can't. Whenever my kids say, I can't do something, I freak out. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do something? Why can't you do it? Do you not have arms? Do you not have this? Like, can you, like, you can't write, like you can't think. And I get so worked up because you can do anything. You may not be good at it. Like, Running a marathon, you think I'm going to try for like to get like a competitive time? Absolutely not. I'll be lucky if I'm like walking across the finish line at the end, but I'm doing it because I know that I can do it and I choose to do these things. So showing our children that we're show or, you know, anybody that we're continuing to show up, someone like myself, I've had a heart attack. I have all of the excuses in the world to not show up, but I show up every day because every day I wake up, I'm like, thank God I'm here. I have another day, another day to do something. And if I don't do all the things I want to do today, I'll get to them tomorrow. It's not the end of the world, but just being the best possible version of versions of ourselves, I think is important. Yeah, I definitely agree. So again, you have already accomplished so much and you are nowhere near being done. You talked about the marathon and everything, but what else is on your agenda? What's next for Jen? Man, so many things, you know, like I said before, I'd love to do all the things, right? And I think I mentioned this when we were in the conference, I have this vision of helping 47 businesses achieve their goals by 2047. And at first, when I set the goal, I would come out and say, I want to own 47 businesses and not necessarily like right now, I'm starting off as a venture builder. So I'm helping other people start their business and helping them to grow and learn to be to be successful business owners, whether you have a small business, like a t-shirt business, or you have a big company that have a lot of people in it, wherever those goals are and whatever they are, I want to help people to achieve their dreams. So. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. So, you know, just so powerful to be able to, you know, look back because I think so many times, you know, we didn't come here by ourselves. We didn't get here. There were people helping us, whether they were investing time or money or mentoring or whatever. And I think it's something really special when you get to a point that you can, again, give back. So your goal is to help 47 businesses. Where are you at right now with that number? So right now I am at four and I have three starting this year. So I put it out into the universe. I said, you know, when I first, when I first kind of came up with this goal, I wasn't sure how well it was going to be achieved. And, but I put it into the universe. I said, this is what's going to happen again, whether it's a small business or a big business, if I can help somebody, then I'm going to achieve my goal. And I mean, realistically speaking, I already got four. So we got this. I love it. That's awesome. So great. Well, I know that so many of our listeners are just going to be blown away again by you and they're going to want to stay connected. They might want to follow you. They hopefully want to hire you if they're thinking about, you know, running a business. Where is the best place for people to find you? So LinkedIn is fantastic. So you can check me out at Jen Potter on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram, Jen underscore live your best life. You can send me an email at Jen at Epic 47, Jen with one N. So J-E-N at Epic 47.com. I love it. And we're going to put all your show notes, um, all your contact information in the show notes. So as we get ready to close out here, um, what would be maybe one last message that you want to share with all those women out there that are crushing it every day and just giving them the motivation and the insight to keep going? Don't give up. And if there's something that you want to do, if it's not what you're doing today, you can change it tomorrow. So no matter how much it costs, no matter what that looks like, you need to manifest it and you need to make it happen. So don't wait till tomorrow. Do it. 
love it. Well, Jen, it has just been an honor having you here. Like I said, I was so Thank impressed you. when I got to meet you and watch you speak at the conference. And what you are doing is truly changing and impacting lives. I mean, you you really are someone that walks the walk, talks the talk. You know, you believe in everything you're doing and your passion to help others is just, it's very inspiring. And I just want to mm-hmm. acknowledge you for everything that you're doing. And I cannot wait to see those photos of you crossing that finish line when you run the marathon next year and just know that I'm one of your biggest cheerleaders. So I'm always in your corner as well. So thanks so much for Thank being you. here today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And thanks for all of you for following us again, another amazing episode where we talked about the power of chasing our dreams, not letting anything hold you back, the power of asking for help and also setting those boundaries and that you have all the greatness inside of you. So thanks for following today. Remember, you can catch all of the episodes on our podcast, The Working Women's Channel.